Welcome to Motivated by Love, hosted by Reverend Sheila Z, a show designed for people who want to grow spirit, soul, and body, reaching into the Word of God to bring maturity and encouragement. Motivated by Love, hosted by Reverend Sheila Z, edifying God's people to be all that He created them to be. Welcome to Motivated by Love, everyone. Tonight, the TV show that we're recording for is on the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, and it will air in a few weeks, but we're already on there, so you can go to that on your internet, and you can find Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, and you can see some of the other Motivated by Love shows that are there, and they will be a lot more anointed. I have the annoyance. And full of words. I'm, I'm, I think I'm filled with the gift of annoyance. I think I, you're like a brother that I don't want. That's what Gary... I've got four. Thank you very much. Where did you fit in the mix? I was number four of six, so I'm the middle child, and I'm always right. You didn't get any attention growing up, I, I did didn't. you? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was the youngest. I got it all. You did. My brother Jimbo's the same way. Does he get all the attention? Yes. Does it bother you? Not at all. How do you feel we about gave him, We gave him all of the attention. How much younger is he? Four years. That's significant. There were six of us kids born in nine years. This was supposed to be an interview about him, but since he's asking me the questions, I'll just let him do the interview. There were four of us born in five years. Yeah. So My it, parents had four kids in five years, three in diapers, they tell me. I don't know. I was young. Yeah. at the time. So is that why you have to find humor in everything? No, I was so poor. We preached against everything we couldn't afford. I went to that same church. You know what? When we were growing up, if you cost money, it was a sin. Yeah. We was that not true? We, we preached against it. Yes. God didn't want because you to have it. Because we couldn't afford to go. Did. Nobody else should get to go. Did you, get, did you give imaginary gifts at Christmas? Yeah. We were so poor, our imaginary gifts were used. That's true. I could never even I used think a of a new for, gift. I used to get a dollar for my birthday. You did? Yeah, a dollar. I used to Wrapped make a dollar. Tissue paper. I loved World's Finest Chocolate when I was a kid. You ever heard of oh, that? Oh, yeah, our church yeah, used, I used to, to sell it. Yeah, we spoke, I sold it for my church, too, but I marked it up. Um, <laughs> I did. It sold for a quarter, but I marketed it for 50 cents. And uh, then my mother said, where'd you get that money? And I said, I made it selling chocolate. He said, that's the Lord's money. The Lord got his cut. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, she made me go back. She made me, I did tithe, and then she made me go back and give it all back. And I said, well, I want my tithe back since I got to give the money back. And, and she said, you can't get the money back from God. I said, well, God doesn't, should give me the money back because uh, if I got to give all this other money back. But then I went around to the homes and I said, my mother says I'm supposed to give you this money back if you want it. <laughs> but I've already tithed on it. So that means they didn't have to. They didn't. How early in your childhood did you know that this was a gift that you were given? I haven't recognized it yet, so <laughs> I'm 55. So, you know, I really didn't want to be a humorous person. I just wanted to be a preacher, and people kept laughing during the altar call, so I just kind of... <laughs> I guess I better go with that. <laughs> so I, I was puppet. I used to do puppets. And so that's how I started with puppets. And we couldn't afford puppets because we were poor. And um, so... Well, how poor were you? We had to go to Kentucky Fried Chicken and lick other people's fingers. That's, how, <laughs> that's bad, ain't it? We just didn't have it. It was just... <laughs> this is not, that's not a good visual. Oh. Anyway, so um, there was a company out of San Diego, Puppet Productions Incorporated. If you wrote sketches for them, they would send you a free puppet. So 11 sketches later, we have a puppet ministry. And so it was nothing to write these sketches. And it's like, I thought I was ripping them off. I really did. I come home from school, write a sketch, send it in. They send it back all produced with soundtracks and intros, outros and all that. And it's like, what? and I got a puppet too. And they call that Veggie Tales now, right? I actually do know the people who wrote that, but no, no. this was uh, Puppet Productions. Now, yeah. how old were you when you were doing 11. That? Started when I was 11. Yeah, so we had a puppet ministry by age 12, and then we carried that through. Wow. Then we finally had enough money to buy a stage that wouldn't fall down. 
It's real embarrassing when you're working puppets and all of a sudden your stage falls and every child's heart is crushed. There are people doing that. <laughs> I remember those library days. So, yeah. Then we got a stage made out of velour, made out of PVC and velour. I didn't know what velour was. It sounded like something you'd fish with. Is that a lure? No, it's the lure. So how does your wife uh, deal with your humor? Let's call her and find Let's out. Let's call her and find out. How does she deal with it? Uh, she married it. I know. So. Did she know it was really there like it is now? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I started out, I saw her. Do you ever her. really see her? Yes. Is she real? Yes. Okay. She kissed me this morning. She did? Said, leave. <laughs> Leave and make some money. But I said, I'm going to do ministry. Oh, leave. And then she said she wanted me to take her to a place that she had never been. And so I took her to the kitchen. <laughs> My wife makes great reservations. So at the end of your life, what would you like for your habitat to say? On my tombstone? Yeah. Oh, that's now, you, it's not going to be funny. <laughs> He's not funny, really. That's what I want to say. He's really not funny. <laughs> so, it's all a joke. He's not funny. No, I actually have thought about that. I'm going to get a player, a uh, uh, solar player for my tombstone. And when people come to visit, they can press play, and some of my material will play for them. Good and, idea. Yeah, and then people might come to my tombstone, because I'm going to have it at Walmart. That way my wife will come see me, uh, and uh, I'm going to have my tombstone at Walmart. And people can play it, and it's like, hey, going to Fennell's grave, he's got some new material. <laughs> so I'm thinking about that, really. I got 22 hours of material. All, everybody can just keep pushing the button and nobody will Press get the same play. Thing. Exactly. Press play. On a serious note, you do have some missions that you are a part of. I do. And what, uh, on those parts, would you let the people know what you, you truly love when it comes to the missions that you're involved in? God likes that mission. <laughs> He's rearranging the furniture. I better tell the truth. <laughs> it is lightning outside. <laughs> I believe everyone ought to be involved in the Great Commission, help people, elevate lives. Uh, I work in Dominican Republic with the large population of Haitians who were displaced after the earthquake. So they came into this area hoping to find some way of surviving and the large, a large population that we deal with is at the dump there in Puerto Plata. And so we feed about 85 people a day at the dump who would not get uh, any kind of nutritious meal. And then we also have a school where we teach the children, uh, several, we support local churches. We have a training center for men and women for career training. We have a, a family counseling for uh, people. Um, we have feeding programs for the community and housing programs where we build houses for the needy. And so it's a really holistic area. And then we go out on the streets. Puerto Plata used to be one of the family-friendly uh, destinations. Now it's the fourth highest in sex trafficking in the world. Mm. And so we go in there and try to do our best to witness and uh, uh, tell people there's another reality other than this. And so we work with the girls and the boys that are out on the streets. And so it's a real need. And so seeing it, you can't do everything, but you can do something, you know. You, you can't change the world, but you can change the world you're in. And so we, my best friend, Mike Williams, he's also a comedian. We decided we'd do something to make a difference. And so we have, and it does make a difference. When you're traveling and you're ministering with the uh, comedian side, and, of course, the word comes through that, what do you feel is most effective from your heart to the people with the laughter, but what 
when you're, when you're all done, what do you hope that they take away from what they receive through the word and through the humor that you bring to the, to the ministry? Well, sometimes my audience is not a church audience, and sometimes it might be a cruise ship. Or, but what I want them to know is that it doesn't have to be filthy to be funny. One, Amen. From, from the comic perspective. Secondly, thank you. Yes. Secondly, that uh, Christians can be at the top of the craft also, and you don't have to be secondary just because you're a Christian that you can be top of the craft in the, in the art of comedy or storytelling as well. But mostly important for me would be to leave the audience a little closer to the cross. I might not can get them all the way to the cross, but I can move them in the right direction. And it might be subtle, it might just be the stories I tell, but it moves people toward the cross. And I think if I'm doing that, I'm doing what God put me here to do, is to be his testimony. Yeah. And you know, when I looked up in the Bible, there's about eight different places where laughter is spoken about. There's laughter in different ways. You know, when, when Abraham was told he was going to have a child and he told his wife she laughed, but it wasn't a good laugh. It was a sarcastic laugh. But when Job said in Job 8.21 that he... His, that he would be filled with laughter and then joy would be up on his lips. He was going through one of the roughest times that he was, could go through as a natural person. That'd be equivalent to the IRS coming to your door yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, kind of like, yeah, you're here to say what? And, um, but then there's Elizabeth in, in Luke 1, and when, when Mary came into the room, the baby went in her leap for joy, and one of the words for laughter is joy if you look up the synonyms. And so tonight, what do we always use the scripture? The joy of the Lord is my strength in Nehemiah 8.10, right? That is. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been on the mountaintop or if you're in the valley, maybe some of you may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Maybe you're walking on the Grand Tetons and you're looking at everything and it's, everything is beautiful. But most most importantly, is that we never lose the perspective that we were made to laugh. We were made to enjoy life. We were not made to be burdened down. We were not made to be, um, you know, beaten down. We were made, Jesus came, that we could have life and have it more abundantly. John 10.10 10 says that Satan comes but to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give life and give it abundant. How many of y'all want abundance in Jesus? Amen. I want abundance of health. I want abundance of strength. I want abundance to be able to bless ministries. I want abundance to be able to, to face things that I've never faced and know that he's going to be there. And I know that you, Brother Justin, you've walked through some uh, uh, health scares in the last few years. How many pounds have you lost now? Christian pounds Christian or secular pounds? Secular. Oh. <laughs> I've lost about 80, about 80, 80. pounds. Yeah, I'm selling my diet outside if you want to buy it. <laughs> it's called pancreatic cancer. <laughs> so so uh, if you have that, don't give up. You can still live. I'm in my 27th month. So I'm, uh, I passed my expiration date about 24 months ago. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm in that 3%. And sometimes you feel a little bit guilty, like why did God heal me and didn't heal the next person? I don't have that answer. I just know that I pray believing when somebody's sick, somebody prayed for me, yeah. believing, and uh, probably had my mama praying for me. Yes, that's, amen. That doesn't hurt. Yes. Um, but I didn't talk about it a whole lot. I just kind of mm -hmm. kept it to myself. Because at the same time, the doctor was telling me you have about four to five months to live. Uh, I was hearing from the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and said, this is not what will kill you. And so I was a little conflicted at that time, but I just, I knew God's voice because I had acted on it before. Like when I went to seminary or when my child was born and other things. And so I knew his voice and I, so I didn't negate 
what I was hearing. And so I never really got overly burdened by the diagnosis that the doctor gave. And he didn't like it four or five months later when I came back healthy. He goes, what's, what's with you? I go, feeling better. <laughs> he goes, wow. Didn't think we'd be seeing you back here. And I go, yep, I'm a return customer. <laughs> Do I get a refund? He goes, uh, it, I said, he said, well, it's nothing short of a miracle. And I said, or a wrong diagnosis. And he goes, well, we didn't make the wrong diagnosis. So you're saying it's a miracle? I didn't say that. Yeah. That's a kind of interesting story. So I don't know, anybody struggling with a, we've been given a terminal diagnosis? Is anyone in here? Wow. Really? It is Naples. I thought it was one in three. One, two, three. We're one of the healthiest counties in the state, they say. Really? That's what they say. That's good. That probably wouldn't be Polk County because we fry everything. No, I was born in Polk County, honey. Man, we, if my mama clipped her toenails, we could probably eat them for dinner, you know, fried. <laughs> I'm just telling you, we eat everything. With gravy, you can eat it. Yeah. Gravy but or Campbell mushroom fry, soup. Fry it, and, fry it and eat it. Yeah. It's good for you. How many of y'all are excited about Brother Justin Fernell being here? Amen. <laughs> I'm more excited. I did not realize I when did. I said to him, you, you look really skinny, uh, what he was going to say. How many of y'all know we all need miracles? And if God can do it for him, he can do it for anyone. Anybody want my diet? <laughs> no, you don't want it. That's yeah, what I'm sometimes saying. you don't want to go through what they go through to get to where they got. Amen? I have to tell you this story. So it's, it's a true story. Ever heard a preacher say that? Hey, before I start preaching, I want to tell you a true story. Like, what's the preaching going to be? A bunch of lies? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was up in Vine at a church in Macon, Georgia, and they brought me in to speak. That was the very beginning of my career, about 32 years ago. And I didn't have a lot of material. And so they said, well, you're speaking to seniors. Well, I just understood that it was senior adults. Well, I got there, and the senior adults were doing a banquet for the high school seniors. I had material for senior adults, not high school seniors. It was horrible. It was just a horrible, I was horrible. I wasn't funny. It wasn't, it didn't, didn't fit. And I'm just looking at the clock going, oh, time to quit. And finally it was over. And I said to the youth pastor, look, I'm sorry. I, I did my best, but I thought it was senior adults, senior high school. Sorry. Don't pay. Don't give anything. Just write this one. He says, no, no, we already wrote the check. It's no sense in both of us going away disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, Joy's going to minister in music. Brother Fresnel's going to prepare to minister. And after we finish this offering, Brother Fresnel will be here to minister. To do whatever. What are you, you said this is not a church service. What is this called? A concert? A comedian show? No, I'm just here. We're going to tell stories and laugh. But can you truly give Brother Justin Fresnel a Motivated by Love welcome and a Naples welcome? God bless you, brother. Does your daddy talk like that at home? Like what? You know, with that preacher voice. You know what preacher voice is? They go up high. They come down low. They get loud. They get soft. <laughs> they talk to you. I said they talk to you. I said they talk in triplicate. <laughs> amen, amen, and amen. I said, does your dad talk like that? I said, absolutely. He didn't really, but, you know, at, I, got the, I got the joke going now, you know. So, really? Yeah, I mean, Deacon's dad would probably, Deacon would probably say, So when I come home, I want that grass mowed. <laughs> Not my dad. My dad. So, so when I come home, I shall put the hand on the handle of the mower. I shall pull once, not twice, but three times I shall pull. I shall go north, south, east, west. Cut the grass, back the grass. Put the bag of grass beside the road. Thus saith the father. <laughs> I'm ready to give in the offering for chores. I'm just telling you, that's, a, that's how it worked out. Scared you, didn't I? Scared the Catholics just then. I did. I think I did. Which I wonder why America has so much problem with violence and everything. Can we just blame it on the mothers? Can we just do that? It's what mom sang to us. That's what messed us all up. What did your mother sing? What's the, what did you sing to your children? Rock a bye baby. What? In a treetop. In a tree top. What, what kind of crackhead mom going to leave her baby up in a 25-foot lob lolly pond and forget about it? You know, where's my baby? Up there. Oh, 
So child abuse is the first thing they sing to us. Thanks, Mom. And then what's that? Three blind mice. See how they run. Well, see how they run into the wall. Because <laughs> Mama took the carver knife and cut the tails off and poked the eyes out. Hmm. Child abuse, animal abuse. What's the next? Rub-a-dub-dub, three men. Oh, no, that's, that's a, no. No, we're jumping to veggie tails right now. That's it. You, you think when your kid gets a little bit of language, they're going to do all right until you're teaching this one. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such a dish. and No, see such a sight, and the dish ran away with the spoon. That's not a nursery rhyme. That, my friend, is an LSD flashback. That's what... <laughs> Somebody was up on something all night. Okay. I had my picture made when I'd lost some weight, and so this is my photo picture, you know, that I... And it went forward in the promo to this church. So I'm there on a Sunday morning, and the lady in the vestibule, she's the, the greeter. I'm not used to greeters. My mom was the greeter. These are professional greeters at this church. And uh, she got, he must be visiting here. And she had to toad me. I, go, I, am the, I am visiting. You're going to like today. Pastor, this is what she said, word for word. I said, why is that? Our pastor's not preaching. <laughs> and we have a guest speaker who's supposed to be very funny. And afterwards, we'll break forth the word. Break forth the word? That sounds like a rapper or something like that. Yeah, I'm coming to you now with a fresh new beat and a story from the Bible that'll think you sweet. About a homeboy cousin in the book of Acts, he went to a meet. Yeah, he began to relax. He was snoozing, snoring, dripping the drool. He said it was just a bob and he was looking like a fool. He was sitting in the window that was up three floors. The pizza went long and he started getting bored. Then without a clue, even the baby by, the dude fell out and he began to fly like a rock. It's been dropped. Kid plumped. His heart stopped. He was got The OTS dead on the spot. And he was doing, doing the youth. Yeah. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> Wasn't planned. I get ideas when I'm driving on the road. Do you do that? What do you do when you're on the road? You call people? Do you call people? I call people on the road. I don't call them names. I just call them. Have you seen this sign? This is the most useless sign if you have a breakdown. I had a breakdown mentally also. And uh, no one came. I felt like Jonah in the well. No one came. And so when I got back to civilization, I had me a new sign made. This is one I had made. This is great. Yeah. Yeah, everyone comes to this sign, man. I, I could put this up in less than five minutes. I'll have the police precinct, the fire department, and every minister in a 30 mile, 30 mile radius. So y'all come. How can I help? I got to thinking, sometimes my brain just goes crazy sometimes during church. I got to thinking, what if the pastor doubled as a... a auctioneer ever think about that well the message how fast would the message go you know like and i i just thinking about you know maybe he's running late needs to get over you know it's getting close to 12 o'clock and everyone's going to go out to the golden corral you know and going to leave any so he's got to get that invitation all right now all those ready to receive rights. One now, who's going to be the one now? Raise your hand now. Who's going to be the one? Raise your hand. Come out to the center of the walk and take the center of the walk and come down to the middle of the altar. One now, who's going to be? There's the one now. Now, who's going to be two? Who's going to be two? Two now. Look at our two now. Here's the two now. There's the two and a three. Oh, brother and sister, come on down to the middle of the altar. Four now. Who's going to be the four now? Four now. Look around. Who's going to be the little? Raise your hand now. Who's going to be the little? There's the four over there. And a five now. Who's going to be the five? There, there. Who's going to be the five? Five, five. Looking for the five, five, five. Now looking for the five. There's five over here. Now it's looking for six. Looking for six. Looking for six, six, six. Seven, looking for seven, seven, who's going to be? Five, sold out to Jesus, took the sinner's walk and came down to the middle of the altar. You're dismissed. Ding! That's just how my brain works. It's just messed up. Pastors are all about so litigical instead of liturgical. But they're always looking like we can't get sued. You know, we don't want to get sued. So I got to thinking, you know, it might be, um, it might be interesting how they'd have to do a salvation disclaimer before they could even do an invitation to know Jesus. Yeah, I think it's going that way. And if it did, 
it might sound something like this. Becoming a follower of Jesus Christ may result in a decreased interest of former habits, cursive language, and alcohol consumption. Contact your pastor immediately should you have a heightened spiritual experience that lasts for more than four hours. In rare cases, some followers may experience an increased interest in polyester fabric, southern gospel music, potluck dinner, and group travel to the Holy Land. Family and friends may be affected by your open exposure to faith. Salvation comes with a non-transferable eternal life guarantee valid for this world and the world to come. Don't delay. Pray today. Angels standing by ready to rejoice. Thunder Road. 2.30 in the morning. Not a soul in sight. I went to a Taco Bell just to get a bite. Got some bean burritos, pintos, and cheese. Went on back to my hotel, went to bed, and went to sleep. And the thunder rolled. <laughs> Life's too short not to laugh, isn't it? And life's too long not to laugh. So we should laugh a little bit and don't take yourselves too seriously as my dad say, no one else will. My dad had a lot of those sayings. Those are kind of funny. The funny ones to me, I got so much to say, I don't even know where to start. And I was on the front pew, so start somewhere near the end. He'd say stuff to get me laughing. Congregation, as we pray, could you lift up the person sitting next to you? <laughs> I don't know. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let the Spirit decide. Oh, no! Let's sing from our heart. My favorite one from him was, Congregation, bow your heads and look toward heaven. I hope they're going to have a healing service. Dear Jesus, thank you for life and life eternal. I pray for those who are making that decision tonight, coming closer to the cross, or maybe a decision to accept you as Savior, that there will be a great celebration in heaven. And be with them as they make this journey to knowing you more and more. Thank you for life eternal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sealers from God, a devotional filled with practical yet inspirational teachings and real-life experiences with real-word application which will encourage the reader. Order your copy today at Amazon.com or MotivatedByLove.org. If Motivated by Love, hosted by Rev. Sheila Z, has been a blessing to you, you can make a tax-exempt donation at MotivatedByLove.org or write MBL Ministries, 3485 Mercantile Avenue, Naples, Florida, 34104. Or send prayer needs or praise reports to MotivatedByLove at AOL.com. For prayer, call 239-325-2740. That's 239-325-2740.